All right. So, summaries of the conference talks. These are going to be the Cliff Notes versions. I'm going to put them all into one playlist, this being the first video of the playlist. But I'm going to start with the uh, women's session and then move on to each of the sessions after that. So, here we go. These summaries are generally going to be summarized from the Deseret News summaries of the conference articles, but this is a way that you can watch or listen um, via YouTube without, you know, doing that boring thing called reading. Sister Cheryl A. Esplin of the Primary General Presidency spoke on feeling lives with light and truth of the gospel in her general women's session address of conference on March 28th. Several Several years ago, Sister Esplin attended a meeting where a young woman leader demonstrated the importance of being filled with the gospel by squeezing two soda cans. One had been opened and emptied, while the other was unopened and filled. She crushed the empty can easily when the full one held firm. When filled with the Spirit and with gospel truth, Sister Esplin said, We have the power to withstand outside forces of the world that surround and push against us. However, if we are not filled spiritually, we don't have the inner strength to resist the outside pressure and can collapse when forces push against us. One of the best places for an individual to receive the strength from the gospel is within the family, Sister Esplin noted. Families are the Lord's workshop on earth to help us learn and live the gospel. We come into our families with a sacred duty to help strengthen each other spiritually, she said. Because of this, she added, Satan does everything he can to distort or separate us from the truth of the gospel. Strong eternal families and spirit-filled homes do not just happen, Sister Esplin added. They take work in each member of the family contributing to their collective strength. She declared and added that even as an individual, we can strengthen family by seeking truth. We are continually counseled to increase our spiritual knowledge through prayer and through studying and pondering the scriptures and the words of the living prophets, she said. Sister Esplin recounted the history of her great-grandfather, grandfather's sister, Elizabeth Staley Walker, as she struggled to maintain and strengthen her testimony. After being married, Elizabeth and her family lived in the, near the Nevada border and ran a mail station. Travelers would stay the night at their home, where Elizabeth spent days and nights cooking and serving meals for them. Some of the travelers were educated, well-read men, who would talk about the sly fraud Joseph Smith, who wrote the Book of Mormon to make money. All this talk made Elizabeth feel isolated and alone. Sister Espen said, she was too frightened to say anything to those who ridiculed her religion. She felt she could not have defended her belief if she had tried. Her family moved, and Elizabeth found time to think and to pray to, to Heavenly Father about the doubts about Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon that troubled her. One night, she had a dream. Two men on a hill, one man was speaking to another, who knelt on the ground and reached into a hole with a stone lid next to it. Years later, in 1893, Elizabeth went to the dedication of the Salt Lake Temple. There she saw a stained glass window depicting the scene in her dream. Elizabeth said, In there I saw the same picture that I had in my dream. I feel satisfied I was shown in a dream a picture of Angel Moroni giving Joseph Smith the gold plates. Shortly before her death, Elizabeth recorded her journal. Recorded in her journal. The thought came to me as plain as someone had said to me, Do not bury your testimony in the ground. Sister Espen said, the answers to our prayers may not come dramatically, but we must find quiet moments to seek greater light and truth. And when we receive it, it is our responsibility to live it and share it and to defend it. 